Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt. In this video, we're going to have a look at vocal tuning using Waves Tune. Firstly, if you are new to my channel and new to my videos and you like what you see, please click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. So Waves Tune, uh, the version that I'm showing in this video, this is an older video, so it may not be the latest version. There may be newer, nicer versions, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, as I stated, this is a slightly older video uh, that was in one of my courses previously that I'm now putting up on YouTube. Uh, but the techniques are still valid as far as I know and still good. So Waves Tune is basically, you know, it's similar to Melodyne, similar to the full auto tune, similar to Very Audio. Obviously it's a third party plugin that needs to get installed into your DAW. It's not fully integrated, whatever, depending on your DAW. Some will integrate better than others, but it has that flexibility of subtle tuning, extreme tuning, all that sort of stuff. So let's just get into it and I'll show you uh, what it's all about. Now, when you load it up in your software, you'll find four options for it. So if I go in here and I look for tunes, we get a Waves Tune Light Mono, Light Stereo, and Waves Tune Mono and Stereo. So in my case here, I've got a stereo file track, so I'm just doing it in stereo, but a lot of the time you might do it in mono. So the, this is the light version here, and this is the full version. Now they look very similar. The difference that I can see straight away is some of the options in the full version are simply unavailable in the light version. So the shift is gone, the range is gone, and a lot of these tools are gone, and a lot of these settings down here are all gone, and you can see they're all grayed out. So obviously, as its name says, light. It's a simplified version if you uh, only want to do some quick things and you don't need the full options here. We're going to concentrate on the full options because obviously all we need to remember with the light version is that you don't have all of those settings. Okay, so we have various parts of the screen here. We have what they call a global section here. So we can set a reference pitch. We can do a global shift of the pitch of the entire vocal if we wish to do that. We have our formant, which is either corrected or not corrected. So the recommended method is to leave it to corrected because that's going to create the most uh, most natural sounding pitch shifts. Whereas if you set it to not corrected, then the formant will jump around as the pitch shifts and you will get some really weird sounding vocals. Our range setting here, we can specify what type of uh, vocal or instrument we are doing. It defaults to generic, but we can obviously narrow it down to something like an alto. Then we have this section here, segmentation. We can set the, the root of the scale. We can set the scale itself. We've got lots of options here absolute tons of them but we've got our basics as well that we would normally go with so in my case i'm just going to quickly st go straight over to g major here you can see on the uh on the graphic here that we've, we've got some red lines here indicating that they are not included so we have a a tolerance here for note so this basically just determines how accurate it needs to be on the pitch of the note and how much it allows that note to vary, especially when it's holding a note. 
So, you know, you could reduce that so that there's absolutely no adjustment at all or go very high. Uh, the default was 20. The vibrato button here um, just enables the detection of natural vibrato in the track. It defaults to off and obviously you can turn it on. They're indicating that turning it on is not always going to give you great accurate results as it's uh, trying to detect the vibrato. We'll have a play with that and see what it does when we get into it. We have our correction settings here. So again, similar to all the other ones, we have our speed. So this is determining how quickly we are going to be looking for the pitch shifts in notes. We have a note transition section here. So again, this, this speed one determines how quickly the corrections are performed. This note transition determines how, how quickly we will look for changes from one note to another. So this can be useful to get that more natural sound again. So the lower the value, the more, the more jumpy it will sound and more unnatural it will sound and the higher you'll get a little bit more natural, but you could also miss some of the note transitions there. And we have a ratio here, which determines how much correction is performed across the curves of the signal. We've got a bunch of tools here. So we've got a note tool. We've got some scissors, a zoom. We've got a glue tool, pencil, and various other ones there. We've got obviously some undos and we can pick how much to undo, that sort of stuff. We've got auto scroll for the graphics here. Just so this vibrato section here gives us the ability to sort of add some vibrato to some notes. And we've got all various settings here that we can just play with. Okay, so to get started with this, basically, we just set this up the way we want, which we have done. And we should just be able to actually hit play on our vocal track and it will import as much as we play. So we could do the entire track or we could just do just a small section of it. There's, um, it's the same as Melodyne, same as Very Audio. You can do as much or as little as you wish to do. So let's play it and see what it comes up with. So if you want the world to smile with you, then you gotta let it go. Otherwise it's gonna get you, it'll kill you nice and slow. Just let it go, baby gotta let it go. Just let it go, baby gotta let it go. Okay, so we've got our audio in there. That looks nice. We can hopefully. Okay, I thought I could have resized the window, which might have been handy, but it doesn't seem we can. We can obviously zoom in the window and we can scroll. But I can't resize the window. So that's one small negative there is not being able to resize. Sometimes I like to get a better visual representation of this by being able to actually make it bigger. But other than that, it's a nice clean layout. I like the look of it and it's a lot better visually than, uh, than Auto-Tunes is. So that's nice in that regard. We can simply grab a note and we can move it. So, so far it's very intuitive in that regard. We could snip a note in half. And move them around. We can even move where we snip that.
And we can obviously modify multiple notes at the same time. So I'm just going to undo what I was doing there. So we will go back to, to that section there. So when we look at the notes on this screen here, we can see there's an orange line and a green line. So the orange line is the original pitch detected while we were feeding it in. And the green is the corrected. So it's automatically making a correction based on our settings here and these settings. So we should be able to now play the vocal and it will have modified it based on what we see on this screen. So if you want the world to smile with you, then you gotta let it go. Otherwise it's gonna get you It'll kill you nice and slow Just let it go Baby gotta let it go Just let it go Baby gotta let it go So it's it's done a fairly good job There's a couple of bits there that aren't quite right just let it so we've got this section here but again i think that's also because if we look at the orange line there i think there should be a separation in notes on that just let it go just let it go Beep. Just let it Just let it go Baby gotta let it go Just let it go And this bit here as well Just let it didn't get it with this note here. Just let it go. But you'll see here, the reason it didn't get that note is because we have it crossed out because I have picked a G major scale. So it's obviously not right. And it really needed to be able to do that note. So he probably would have got it right if I had to pick the right key or if I had left it at chromatic but it's done a pretty good job and doesn't sound too bad at all so i'm quite impressed with the waves tune this is the first time i've used this plugin so i'm very impressed with it so if you want the world to smile with you then you gotta let it go otherwise it's gonna get you it'll kill you nice and slow just let it go. So we can obviously do all of our other things here. We can change the scale. We can change the key. But what we need to do is, if we're going to change anything, we need to do a select all. And then we can actually apply it. And then it will change it. So if you want the world to smile with you, then you gotta let it go. So you can see we're getting some weird effects there because of that change. So we can go back to what we had before. Now if we change, say, the tolerance of the notes... So here now, it's gone pretty flat here. It's it's sort of wiped out a lot of the notes there. So that's not really a good representation there. So we can go very detailed with the notes, or we can 
reduce how many notes it detects at a little more reasonable level. But the further we go, we suddenly start losing all these notes and we're going to get really weird effects. So we can play with the speed and you can see as I'm adjusting these settings, you can see it changing, which is, it's good to see on the screen there as it's doing that. So I like that feature as well. So the faster I change the speed, the flatter the notes are getting. So if you want the world to smile with you, then you gotta let it go. Otherwise it's gonna get you. It so we start to get some effects there and artifacts. So getting a nice balance between Guinea notes accurate and and not getting artifacts is the trick to all of this stuff. So the note transitions, as I reduce it down, we can see how sharp these note transitions occur. Whereas I wind it down, they become a lot more subtle and follow, they, they more closely follow the orange line as in a gradient. So if we go all the way up, We've basically almost just gone back to the way it was. Or we can go to extremes. So if you want the world to smile with you. So that one's really going to give you the audio tune of auto tune effect there. So we could do that. And then let's see what the ratio does. So again, you start to see it adjusting. So if you want the world to smile with you, then you gotta let it go. Otherwise it's gonna get you. It'll kill you nice and slow. Just... So there you go. That is Waves Tune, vocal tuning plugin. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Have you tried it? Do you use it? Is it your go-to vocal tuning uh, tool? Uh, love to hear your opinion. I personally haven't seen that many people uh, use this. That don't, doesn't seem to be as popular. Um, I don't believe there's any reason why it's not popular. It's just that it's a newer sort of product in the market sort of thing compared to Auto-Tune and Melodyne, etc. But um, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there's tons of you out there that are using this plugin. So let me know what you think. Do you use it? Do you love it? Why do you prefer it over other tools? Love to hear your opinion on that one. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Love to help wherever I can. If you found the video useful, please click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. Hopefully the video has been helpful. I thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.